Worship with Catch on Fire Ministries. We praise God for you. We pray that as you join in, as you listen now, later, that you will be blessed, that the Holy Spirit will draw you to the Father, that you will open your heart. And if you're not saved, invite him in. And those of us who are saved, that something that we're here today would encourage us to hold on. For as the word said, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ had made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. So we give God thanks and praise. As Psalms David said, O oh Lord God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you. So just before we go into worship, we're going to open our service in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, we praise you. We exalt you. We give you all glory and honor. We bless your holy name. How wonderful you are to us, O oh God. Lord, it's because that you first love us, O oh God, why we have this privilege and opportunity, O oh God, to come over these areas to present your word to all those who are, who would tune in to hear, Father. We ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit, O oh God, who is with us even at this time, O oh God, would, would spread himself throughout the atmosphere, throughout the air, hearing where your word is being heard, Father. He is the agent of salvation. He is the comforter. He is the healer, Father God. So I pray, O oh God, that Lord, as your people tune into the God, whatever their needs are, O oh God, that Lord, you would meet them, Father. And most of all, you would call, draw them to you and make them your child today. We ask that you would bless whatever we do today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to go into our worship with our wonderful Minister Black. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me, oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, oh, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, all friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I lay my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I lay my burdens down, all burdens down, Lord. Burn us down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I lay my burdens down. I'm going home to 
live with Jesus since I laid my burdens down. Oh, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Oh, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Bearing, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Can't nobody do me like Jesus can. Nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Oh, he's my friend. Oh, he's my friend. Oh, he's my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Oh no, amen and amen. Camp meeting in the house. Amen. We give God thanks and praise for our worship. Thank God for our sister for using her so mightily, so anointed. Oh, ain't nobody can do me like Jesus. Pick me up, turn me around, and plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. Only we only about him we can say that. Everybody else, they pick you up and when they don't they drop you. <laughs> But Jesus, he is our rock. We can stand on him. We are secure in him. Amen. At this time, we're going to go to our scripture reading with Minister Springett. Sorry, I realize I didn't unmute myself. The scripture reading is from John chapter 1, verses 19 to 42. Now, this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. <clears throat> he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. <clears throat> they asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I'm the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy untie, to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself do not know him. But the reason I came baptizing water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself do not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. 
When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them falling and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You'll be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Amen. Thank God for the reading of the word. Behold the Lamb of God, and he's still the Lamb of today. The Lamb that was slain for, from the foundation of the earth for the remission of our sins. We don't have to go out and raise an unblemished lamb or buy an unblemished lamb. I'm not sure if it's the real thing. But Jesus took all that away when he died on the cross for us. No longer do we have to make a sacrifice because he has become a sacrificial lamb for eternity. So we thank God for the word is alive and well today. Amen. We'll continue with our worship with Minister Black. Amen. And praise God for the blessed word. As we reflect on the scriptures and prepare ourselves for the preached word, let us remember that, Lord, we are available to you. Hallelujah. You gave me my hands to reach out to man, to show him your love and your perfect plan. You gave me my ears. I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cry of sinners but can i wipe away their tears you gave me my voice to speak your word to sing all your praises to those who never heard but with my eyes i see a for more availability i see the hearts that have been broken so many people to be free lord i'm available to you my will i give to you I'll do what you say, do use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty and I am available to you. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, Lord, now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes, so you can use them as you please. I have emptied out my cup so that you can fill me up oh now i'm free and i want to be more available to you oh lord i'm available to you oh my will i give to you i'll do what you say do use me lord to show someone the way 
and it ever lead to say, oh, my storage is empty, and I am available to you. Oh, Lord, I'm available to you. All oh, my will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say, Oh, my storage is empty and I am available. My storage is empty and I am available. My storage is empty and I am available. Lord, I'm available to you. Oh, to you. To you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is looking for empty vessels to fill up. And all we have to say, Lord, I'm available to you. Each one of us was created for a purpose. And if you're frustrated in your Christian walk, just come to him and say, Lord, I'm available to you. Because he said, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. And he will repurpose your situation and make you useful in his kingdom if you make yourself available because he's not gonna force himself on you. You have to be willing. So let us, as we go into the word, that we would yield ourselves to him. So we want to thank God for bringing us thus far in our worship. Thank God for the time of worship. We thank God for the reading of the word. We thank God that he has anointed his servant to preach the word. So without any ado, I present to you Dr. Novella Springett, as she ministered the word of God to us today. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. What a privilege and a pleasure and an honor to be able to enter into worship with these ladies and to present the word as God gives utterance. Pray that it will be all of him and none of me and that his anointing will fill these places where we are and that it will extend to the hearers because we need to hear from you, Lord. We need a word from you. We're calling on you because, say, God, we are nothing without you. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we thank you because you have given insight and that you will continue to not let your void, word go forth void. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're speaking today on the topic, Worthy is the Lamb. I've been hearing that in my head for about all this week. We're looking at when John presented Jesus to the world. John was the messenger, the last of the prophets, and considered to be the greatest of the prophets. He instituted the first ordinance, um, which is baptism, baptism by water. John was also the beloved disciple, the one who loved Jesus. He, could, he always had to be touching him leaning on in his bosom and he gave us the gospel of john he gave us first second and third john and revelation i was in the spirit on the lord's day and he was one of the inner three james peter and john was who jesus took with him when he went to the mount of transfiguration and he has a, the lyricism the the beauty of the gospel of john the most popular scripture the world has ever seen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
And he said that he wrote this so that anybody, many would believe that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing this, they would have life in his name. There's no life in any other name. The only name that gives life is the name of Jesus, Christ, the anointed one. And we look at the scripture that we're dealing with today, the Jewish leaders sent people to interrogate John. We don't know what they asked him. We only the uh, John the Baptist, not the Apostle John. This is documented by the Apostle John what happened when they sent people to interrogate John the Baptist. And all we have is John the Baptist's answer. No, I'm not the Messiah. No, I'm not Elijah. No, I am not the prophet you're looking for. Which some believe could have been in a Jeremiah. So then John they said, well, since you're none of these things, who exactly are you? Because you got a crowd following you and you're here baptizing. So we need to know who you are because we're the important ones. We run things around here. And John says in the words of Isaiah, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Those days when the, they didn't have the government repairing the roads. So when an important person was taking a journey, they sent messages out before to fix the road so that they wouldn't be dropping into potholes. So he was saying, I am the one that came to prepare the way so that Jesus could come more smoothly. I am the messenger, the one in the wilderness saying, where you guys come here, prepare the way. Make sure that he can travel smoothly. That's what John was saying. He was very clear that he was not Jesus. And then he went on to say, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. Palestine is like the Caribbean. It's dirty, it's dusty. And those days people walked everywhere. And so a lot of dust was on their, on their feet, covering their sandals. And only the lowest slave would the least of the least would be allowed to untie the sandals that's the worst job you could have in the household even if you were someone's disciple they were not supposed to ask you to untie your sandals because that was disrespectful it, just because they're the disciple doesn't mean they should be taking advantage of you but then we have john the baptist saying i'm not even good enough for that the person who is coming, who I'm a messenger for. I'm not even good enough to do what the least of the slaves does for everybody else. That was John's vision of himself. Uh, when compared to Jesus, that he wasn't worthy of anything. And we come to verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now Jesus is coming back to John. Time has, John has seen him before because John has already baptized him. Jesus went away to spend 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. And John sees him surrounded by the crowd and says, look, the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. This is the lamb, the true Passover lamb. When his blood is spilled, that angel has to pass by. This is the lamb who is around the throne, still with the slain marks on him. And they're crying, worthy, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. And they're saying, who takes away the sin of the world? And I saw something here when I was studying that I never noticed. Sin is singular. It's not the sins of the world, but the singular. He took away sin. He made the guilty innocent. You know, just like in the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, the most holy day of the year for the Jews, when they would sacrifice, take two goats, sacrifice one and sprinkle the blood because there is no remission of sin without blood being sprinkled. Blood has to be shed. And the other one was a scapegoat. The priest would put both hands and said, this goat is taking all the sin of Israel. And they released him in the wilderness. 
the Lamb of God, who take it away the sin of the world. But unlike uh, what they did in Israel, they had to do it every year. It's still the most holy day of the year for Israelites. The Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. But Jesus, once and for all, when his blood was spilled, he took away our sin. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And he said, this is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. John is still talking to the crowd. He might have had a message and another agenda. When he saw Jesus, he, he forgot everything else. Nothing mattered except that they should know who Jesus was. He said, this is the one. I've been talking about him. I've been preaching about him. I've been waiting about on him. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. This is the one. And he said, a man who comes after me. Because Elizabeth was pregnant before Mary. And so John was born before Jesus. He said, the man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. You know, in biological age, you might think he's younger, but he's greater because he was before me. Adonai, from before the world began, has surpassed me because he was before me. You know, he came after me into the world as a human being, but none can compare to this one that I'm calling on, Jehovah, the pre-existing one who sits outside the time and who could just be created out of nothing. You know, doesn't need anything. No human being can create something out of nothing. We need starting materials, but the great Adonai, the one who was before all of us, and who has no time, the one who says, I am that I am. He's the one who was before John. And John is saying, I didn't know him. They related. The Bible says that Elizabeth and Mary were relatives, but John didn't know what was coming his way. There was no collusion. He was just given instructions, go out and baptize with water. Wait on me. You know, a lot of times I'm, I'm guilty of this. I want to know everything from beginning to end. I like to plan and plan and plan and plan and plan some more. And it's been the hardest thing to learn to walk like this. Just wait on God. Go and do what he told you to do. Go and do what he tells us to do. If he tells us, sing, sing. If he tells us, preach, preach. You know, we have to stop waiting for somebody to make a way and recognize that we're gifted and called of God. Nobody was expected John the Baptist to come and start baptizing with water. In the history of the world, no one had baptized with water. He was the last and the greatest of the prophets. When God give us a calling, and I'm including myself, it's not for anybody to, we're not, not to walk around saying, you really think I should preach? You really think I should sing? You really think that I should do this reading? John, there's no way documented in scripture that John, he was supposed to go into the temple and follow his father's business. Because he was descended from Aaron. His father was a priest. And they must have thought he was crazy when he said, I'm going in the wilderness. I'm going to be preaching. Prepare your way. Because someone is coming. I know he's coming. I don't know who he is. But I'm supposed to be here. Because God told me to do it. We have to stop second guessing God and asking other people's opinion. When God says go, we have to go. When God says do, we have to do. That is the example we have, give, we have been given. John says, all I was supposed to know is that the Holy Spirit will descend on heaven and remain on this man. 
you know, and he said that the, when uh, we have the account that when uh, John put Jesus in the water, the heavens open up, you know, like any good father, God is like, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And a dove came down and rested on him and remained. And he had the Holy Spirit. But John needed to know that he was laboring in vain. That the mission was about to be accomplished. Because the man who he had been sent to baptize and came. Because he was going to baptize with something greater. The Holy Ghost and fire. He was going to send the comforter into the world. John needed to know that. And you know the dove in the, in the temple, they said the dove was the only animal that would give its neck willingly to the night. Just as Jesus laid down his life, no man take it from me. I lay it down for the sin of the world. And it was that dove that he was representing. And John said, this is the chosen one. You know, we watch a lot of movies and the show, this is the chosen one, that is the chosen one. None of them is the chosen one except Jesus. How is this possible that this man who died the worst death that anyone could die, he was hung on the cross as a criminal. He was despised and rejected of men. But the chosen one, the one who stands outside of time, Change the course of history. Time is now after death and before Christ. Because we're dealing with the chosen one. The one who said to God, make me a body and I'm going to go down and redeem Adam's race. The chosen one. The one who chose to give his life for us. Even against the mercy. You can take this cup away from me and not my will. But time be done. And the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. And he saw Jesus passing by. He said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them falling and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was saying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. The next day, John sees Jesus passing by. And he doesn't say, well, these are my disciples. I got to keep my crew with me. Only two of them were with him. But he said to the two, look, there goes the Lamb of God. He knew his place. He knew his calling. He's the moon reflecting the sun. You know, the true light comes from God. There goes the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is this Lamb. There was no crowd, but he still wanted them to know that this was the true Lamb of God. And they followed Jesus. They took the hint. John wasn't saying, stay with me and make me famous. It was like, this is the real power. So they followed Jesus immediately. They didn't wait until they saw him the next day. They didn't wait to see if something else is going to happen. They followed Jesus immediately. When you see Jesus as he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, you're going to follow him. Discipleship is about following. Then Jesus turned on and asked him, what, what do you want? You know, a lot of times people stick to us because they want something. You know, they want to use us. What do you want? And Jesus is still asking the same thing. What do we want? A lot of us think that Jesus is some ATM and we'll get Mercedes Benz and house. I've never read that anywhere in the Bible. What do you want? Do you really want to know me? Are you in this because you want to be famous and make money? What do you want? I hope all of us are answered me. I want to know you. Like Paul says, that I might know him. What do you want? And they say, Rabbi, 
That is the greatest title that they could have laid on him at that day. It was the equivalent of a doctorate. It means you're incredibly learned. You're above. You. They were polite. They just said, where are you staying? They didn't want to say, didn't say to him, stay here and teach me what you know. They're like, where are you staying? We'll go before you and wait on you till you have time for us. They were willing to just be humble and polite. And he said, come and you will see. Come and you will see. You know, he wasn't rude to them and said, oh, y'all ain't nobody. I'm the real important one here. You know, he said, come. The Bible says they that diligent, he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. And there's no way that Jesus will turn down anybody who wants to know him, you know, and he doesn't take advice from anybody. You know, I heard a song say, who could change God's mind about you? Nobody, you know, no, who could show up? Well, you should have known, that, you know, she really hit the body. Why are you hanging with her? You know, no one can change God's mind. As long as you give him your all. He said, come. I got things I want to show you. I want to know. I want you to know me. Come and see this man from Galilee. When you see God, he changes everything. The apostle Paul saw him on the road to Damascus. And he changed history. He changed the Gentiles. Moses said, put me in the cleft of the rock. But he wanted to see his face. And he said, no man can look at me and live. I'm going to put you in the cleft and you can see the back of my head. Come and see. He's still saying, come and see. I want you to know me. I want you to walk with me. I want to be everything that you could ever dream of. Because all that we can dream of is that all that he has given us, we can give it back to him. So he can be used of God for his glory. Not for our upliftment, but for God's glory. All the glory, all the honor belongs to God. Come and see. So they went with Jesus. And the Bible said they stayed with him all day until four in the afternoon. The commentator said that when they first saw him, it was 10 in the morning. They spent all day. They didn't have another agenda. They didn't have anything they considered more important. They didn't say, let me go and see what's happening with John the Baptist. Maybe he needs my help. They spent as long, I am sure, as they possibly could. You know, they wanted to learn of Jesus. It takes time. You know, I remember how eager Bolin and I was when we were teenagers and we were running around prophesying and laying on hands. But it takes time. Where I am now is so much further than where I was then. And I had to live the years that I have lived. To be able to come and know him, it takes time spent at the feet of Jesus. That's why Mary was commended and that Martha was running around doing stuff. Because you have to spend time in his presence in order to be used of him. We've all gone through it. You know, the thing that we thought we could break us is what gives us our testimony and our anointing. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, as the song said, wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. Come and see. And it says, Andrew, Simon's Peter brothers, one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. <clears throat> The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. Then it said the other disciple was the apostle John. Because throughout the book of John, he never mentions his name. It's the humility he had that he didn't want his name to be the one remembered, but only Jesus. And Andrew, when you have seen Jesus, if you really love people, 
If you really care for people, you're going to tell them, I have met the man from Galilee, the one who went around doing good. You know, he raised the dead, he cleansed the leper, he healed the sick. I have met the man. You can't keep this to yourself. It's not about respecting other people. If you believe, if you really want them to live, you're going to tell them about Jesus. Andrew didn't want Peter to lose out. He went to his beloved brother and said, Peter, I have met the Messiah. I've been with John and he can preach and he can baptize. But today, I spent hours in the presence of the one who exists outside of time. The one who's going to change the world. I have met the Messiah. I've met the one that everyone is looking for. And he did it just to Peter. He took him to meet Jesus. Because he knew where Jesus lived. And he was going to show back up. With his beloved brother. And Jesus looked at Peter. And he said, they're calling you Peter, son of John. But I'm calling you Cephas. And the Syriac actually means stone, rock. Cephas. And when you look at the scripture and you look at what Jesus did, you know, he was speaking over Peter, what Peter would become. He didn't see Peter as he was, the impulsive Peter, the one who would deny him on, 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 in Pilate's judgment hall. Instead, he saw him as the Peter he became on the day of Pentecost. When he preached to thousands, when he led the, the apostles, when they were beaten, and he said, we rather to obey God than man. And this is what Jesus does when he looks at us. You know, Hawkins say, everybody see my faults, you know, but you see my future. You know, you don't see me as I am. And that's the love of God that the love of God has for all of us. You don't see us as we are. You see us as we could be and should be once we walk with him. It's a journey. It's a journey. You know, it's a journey. When Paul said, I've learned to be content. He had spent 30 years being shipwrecked, beaten down, left for dead. But he said, I've learned to be content. It's a journey. You know, it's not an overnight thing. You know, it's not an overnight thing. And as we see God, he will reveal himself. He said, come and see. Come and see. I got things to show you. You think you know stuff now. But when you walk with me, I take you to places you could never dream of. That's why Paul said, come, everything has done. Because he had tasted and seen. David said, I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Oh, blessed is the man who trusts in him. It's a walk with God. Walk worthy. Let us walk worthy of the vocation where we are called. And having learned of Jesus, let us tell others about him. Let us point others to him. Let us show them, tell them, dear, high and lifted up. It's the Lamb of God who take it away, the sin of the world. Finally. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for the word. Behold the Lamb, which take it away the sins of the world. Oh, God, is, he's still taking away the sins of the world. If you would come unto him. I remember when we were growing up, we used to sing this song. Hear Christ call him, come unto me, come unto me, and I will make you fishers of men. He says, if you come to me, I will make you fishers of men. And that's what Christ did to his disciples that he had with him. And he's still calling today. He's still saying, come unto me. Come with your burden, come with your worries, come with your distress. Come however you are, because you're not going to stay that way. He's a God that changes you from where you are and puts you where you want to be, sets you on your path. And that's what he did with Peter, James, and John. 
You know, he told Peter, your name is no longer going to be Simon, but it's going to be Cephas, the rock. And at the second time he encountered Peter with that word, he says, upon this word, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell <laughs> shall not prevail. So it doesn't matter how much the ship tossed and flow or Christian walk go and flow. We have a solid foundation. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The lamb that was slain for our sins. And that blood is still flowing today for whatever sin you have committed. If you think you haven't committed any sin, you still need Christ. Because he said, in sin, did my mother conceive me. <laughs> so all of us have sinned because of Adam. So my desire for you today, that as you hear this word, that you would hear Christ calling you, and that you would answer his call, and that you would make him Lord of your life, and that you would follow him wherever he leadeth. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Amen. So we thank God for the word. We pray that the Holy Spirit would minister his word to the hearts of the hearers, those who are not saved, that they would come into the kingdom because you're being called to. And those of us who are with him, if we are following afar off, we need to janai. If we started following and we stopped following because of whatever circumstances we encounter on the way, he's still calling you. He still has a work for you to do. So get up and come. Come. You know, when the disciples ask him, where are you staying, master? Your question can be today, what will thou have me to do? And he will give you your answer and your assignment. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue the worship from Sister Minister Black. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Springett, for that wonderful word. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for your nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. High yes. and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God. Darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for your nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Oh, worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now. With many crowns, you reign victorious. You're high and lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the The Lamb, you seated on the 
throne crown you now with many crowns you reign victorious you are higher up and you're seated on the throne darling of heaven crucified what is the land 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 amen you know that's one of the theme songs we're gonna sing in the kingdom worthy 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 thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and praise amen worthy is the lamb the lamb of god was slain for your sins i pray today as you hear this message and you hear this worship songs that truly you would recognize that there is no other none other that you can find salvation in no other name, no other savior, but the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the earth to redeem you back to our loving Father. Let's pray, Heavenly Father and God. We thank you for your preach word. We thank you for using your servant today to minister your word. We pray that your Holy Spirit, which is the agent of salvation, the Lord, as your word has gone forward, O oh God, that Lord, O oh God, that any sinner, O oh God, who have tuned into this word, O oh God, that Lord, you would pick their heart, that you would woo them to your Father. I pray, dear God, that Lord, they will see you, O oh God, that I was as the Savior of the world, the one who can forgive sins and will forgive sins if only they would come and ask. So, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the souls that will be saved, O oh God, because of this message. We ask, O oh God, that Lord, you would bring them into your fold, comfort them, heal them, and set them free. In the name of Jesus, we pray, O God, for those of us, O God, who have come around your word, O God, to be encouraged, to be lifted up, to be strengthened, O God. I pray, O God, that this word, O God, that we have heard today, O God, will not just be another word, O God, but Lord, O God, it would speak directly to our hearts, God. The Lord, O God, would recognize, O God, that you who has been slain from the foundation of the world for our sins, O God, that you are still worthy, O God, worthy to receive glory, worthy to receive honor, O God. And Lord, O God, Lord, the only way that we can honor you, Father, is to tell others about you, to tell others of what you have done in our life, to encourage each other. So I pray today, O God, that Lord, your word, O God, will find a lodging place in our hearts, O God. And Lord, O God, that Lord, that this word will go deep down in our spirits, O God, and it will grow up, O God, it will bear fruits, O God, and that the fruits will remain. Before God, that you continue to bless us as we continue, O God, to minister your word, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our benediction and the notices. Praise God. Praise God. As um, we were speaking together before, and we said we are supposed to be lenders and not borrowers. And we do want to have a physical presence. So we are maxing as you feel led. The Lord love it, a cheerful giver. Go to our website, catchonfireministries.com, choose donate. And like I always say, we're doing this because there has to be a base where you can disciple people. And we're hoping that we will be able to be that base in Jesus' name. And this is a benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you in Jesus. I raise somebody so Catch a fire, mm -hmm. catch a fire. Mm -hmm. 
Catch a fire, Jesus. I wish a man is so loud. Catch a fire. Pound them with the holy.